Welcome to video six in a series of introductory videos for SolidCamp. This video's topic is the profile toolpath. The profile toolpath is literally a toolpath that will follow whatever chain geometry you choose. It's kind of like a routering toolpath. So let's, let's get into it and see what that does. So I'll just go to add milling operation, profile. And the workflow here is the same with all the other toolpaths. We're just gonna choose our geometry. So I'm just gonna click new. And I can choose chain geometry just like I did with the previous video in pocket. I'm just going to choose right from the edge. Let's say I want to finish the outside edge of the part. I'll just grab this edge here. And of course, like we saw in the previous video, we can use these options here. Or I can just click on constant Z. And it goes and chooses the all the same chain, all that same level on the same Z plane. Profile, because it's a router cut and there really is no step over with it, it doesn't matter how I choose the chain because I'm going to tell it on what side of that cutting arrow I want to travel. So I can do climb conventional or even just down the center line as long as I know which direction I told the tool to follow. So in this case, I obviously want it to be on the left side. That way I'll get climb milling. Let's go to tool and select our tool. So I'm just going to go and select the tool that I chose previously. That is tool 24, that's my one inch tool. You can review the tool table video in this introductory series to see how I created those tools. Let's go to levels, and I'm just gonna go from the top of the target, let's go down to the bottom of the target. <clears throat> so that's one level of associ associativity, and like we saw in the previous video, I could have also highlighted that line, highlighted that number, and actually chose that face there to get some associativity. But I'm just gonna go with the target definitions for now. Additionally, in both this video and in the previous video, you have options of multi-levels. So I don't just have to define one set of upper level, lower level. I could actually click on this icon and set it for multiple chains. If I had multiple pockets, multiple chains I needed to machine, I would have that ability. Under technology, there's a lot going on here because this toolpath can do a lot of different things. If I'm just looking to follow that outside edge and just finish that face, I can just leave it as is. Basically, I can say I'm doing a finishing pass, as you see here. Number of passes, I'll just leave it as one, so it'll do this toolpath once. I can put an overlap in there. So if I don't want to just uh, start and stop in the same spot, maybe leaving behind a witness line, I can put in, let's say, an overlap of 20 thou, and the step down. Even though there is no step over in this toolpath, there is a step down. So I can put in, let's say, a half inch step down. I could also do roughing. I just have to check the box for roughing and then give it the wall offset, floor offset. But uh, this is only for finishing, so I'm just going to leave that unchecked. But the controls are basically the same. I mentioned earlier that because of the direction of the chain, I wanted to make sure that it's on the left side to get climb milling, so there it is There it is right there. So I told it that it's on the left side of the chain, but I also had right side and center as options. Under link, I can control my lead in and lead out. So because we're doing the outside of the part and I want to kind of feed in before I, I wrap it around, I'm just going to put in a lead in as normal. I'll set it to a value and I'll just say let's lead in just by 50,000. And we'll do the same for the lead out by leaving that box checked. If I do a save and calculate, we'll see that we get a toolpath where I'm going around the part once, feed down for that half inch, and then feed out, uh, back around. There's my 20 thou overlap, but I'm starting on that corner. And I don't, I don't really want to start that corner. I have an overlap, so I don't have to worry about any witness lines, but starting on that corner is a little weird for me. So I'm going to go back to technology, and I'll click on this geometry button, and unique to profile is the ability to modify this toolpath start point. If we get a top view of this, that red circle represents the diameter of my tool, and those points right there represent my start points. I'm actually going to go over here to the start position, and I'll just highlight that zero and tell it to start maybe at the center of that line. I could literally choose anything I want along this chain, and it'll just shift the start position to those points. If I choose this point, it actually projects it to that edge. So that is literally the, the center of that edge there. Other options in here are offset. So if I wanted to overcut or undercut, I could just modify this offset here. So let's say we put in positive 250. So it, it'll undercut by 250. So it actually expands the line. Or I could put a negative in there and get that same, same uh, function. The reason for this is you don't want to have to chain inside SolidCamp. We are an associative 
style toolpath, fully integrated inside SolidWorks. We should use the geometry to our benefit. So there really shouldn't be a need to sketch anything. You should be able to grab a piece of geometry and then use some of these modifications to modify your toolpath. So in this case, you could do overcut just by simply choosing the outside edge and telling it how much you'd like to overcut. I'm gonna set this back to zero because I wanna go right on size there. The extension start and end is more for a open chain. If I were looking to do, let's say, this corner here, and I chose this, this only this one edge, then I could extend from that edge outwards in either direction, either extend or trim. Again, you don't want to have to sketch anything. You're going to use the geometry that's on screen. But since I've already got the outside edge chosen, let's just do that with our new start position. Do a save and calculate. You can see now that it starts and ends at the center of that edge there with a 20 thou overlap there. Let's say I don't want to do one pass and then feed down another pass. I want to have the tool constantly engaging the material. So I need a constant Z-force. I need to move in almost like a helical progression. So what I'll do is I can come over to depth type. and Instead of constant, I'll change it to helical, which now allows me to actually have a helical toolpath. If I change my step down, we'll really see what that looks like. I'm just going to change it to 100 thou. And you'll see that each lap around the part it goes down in depth by 100 thou. And we still get our overlap. These entry and exits are still overlapping if we look at them from the top view. It's just that it's one entry and one exit. The tool is in constant motion, constant contact with the material. So this is actually a much more accurate tool path. Now, let's say we wanted to chamfer the edges there. Well, that is almost like a profile tool path as well because we're just telling it to follow a specific edge there. Well, that is actually an option inside of profile. Let's go back to our profile operation. I'll choose that same contour, so just that top edge. I'm going to choose a chamfering tool. So again, I'll just go to my tool library and I'll just make one on the fly. I'll just say add tool and then we'll choose a chamfer mill. Levels, I'm actually going to set it to top of target, and we'll set this to top of target as well. I don't want it to dip below there. I want it to just kind of follow that edge there. We go to technology. If we did everything we did here, all we would get is a tool path that is offset from the part by the diameter of the tool, the diameter set here. But that's not what the chamfering tool wants to do. It actually wants to use the chamfering edge along there. So if we go back to technology and change this from none to chamfer, we get a new tab that allows us to tell SolidCam that we're actually going to use somewhere on the cone that matches this diameter. So from the tip of the tool and per our tool definition, I'll tell it instead of using the full diameter, use in this case 50 thou. So wherever the cone has a 50 thou diameter, that's the actual edge that's going to ride along that chamfer there. If I do a save and calculate on this, you'll see that the, chamf the, the wireframe of the toolpath moves in. That's because now this is essentially a 50 thou diameter tool. It's just going to offset itself and dip so that it gets there. Now that's still not going to do the actual chamfer. If I had a chamfer here, I would actually choose maybe the bottom edge and then I'd be able to get my nice shape there. But because I'm trying to break the edge and it's not part of the design, I can actually go back here and I'll just put in a little bit of a depth. Let's just say we put in that 50 thou. You can see now that it just dips in 50 thou. That's going to make the chamfered edge. If I do this in my solid verify, we'll see that it makes that edge. So that's basically it. If it was part of the design, I would just choose the bottom edge of the chamfer and I would get almost the same result. Any questions on this or anything else from SolidCam, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at SolidCamSupport.com. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel and this video series. Thanks for watching.